on. This is part two. I'm going to adjust the camera because as soon as it turns on, I see I want it a little bit different. When I'm doing the preview, it doesn't show it as well. So let me just tilt it down just a skosh because you guys are going to want to see all kinds of madness going on. Let me see if that works. Good. You can see the crock pot, boom, boom, boom. See the stove. All right. We got everything going. So we got everything slow cooking. The only thing that happened this morning when I did it live is I forgot to put in uh, some seasoning on top of it. So after I shot the video, I was like, ah, shit, I got so busy talking on the video, I forgot to season it. So what I did to season it, let me move this little, whatever this thing is. So um, what I did is I added some garlic, some herbs de Provence, salt, pepper, that is all. Oh, uh, yeah, that, that's it, just the four things. Now, you, you almost, you, you can't do too little, you really, you could do too much, but you know, within reason, very few people would do too much. So we've got two things to do. Once we shred the beef, we can make a burrito really fast. So you could do, uh, you could actually do this the couple days before and put all the meat in the glass container and you're off to the races. What we're going to do first is we're going to make my kind of Baja slaw. Uh, and then we're going to, uh, so I'll show you how to make that. And then we're going to, um, we're going to blister uh, a pepper while we're, while we're at it. So to get started, I've already washed the pepper. It's got a, it's got a little weird spot on it. Let's make sure pepper's good. Oh yeah. Pepper's really good. So it's got a little weird spot on it. We're going to take that off and then I'm just going to decor this one. The same way we did the peppers this morning. Hope everybody's had a lovely day. My kids just ran down to the drugstore to get something. You know, as soon as they're mobile, they're out the fucking door. All right, let's see here. All right. Now, I uh, when I did my kitchen, I did uh, marble counters uh, because marble is a great food prep area and uh, for baking and other things. And I have kind of no counter, I have a no weirdness on the counter policy, no, no foreign objects on the counter policy. So if I take something out of the fridge, I set it in the area where I don't do food prep or I set it way off to the side, the front, like 14 inches or so where I do food prep, I pretty much never put anything here. So I don't put groceries where the bags have been sitting on the back seat of the truck or been on the floor because you get stuff stacked up in your pickup truck. So I try to keep this area pretty sterile. My kids kind of know it. Everybody who, you know, is around me kind of knows that. And they put the groceries on the kitchen table when we bring them in. So I don't cross contaminate. So we've just taken out a lot of the heat. These seeds have a lot of heat in them. So we're going to kick those off into the garbage. Now, uh, be careful if you sort out a pepper with your bare hands. I recommend some rubber gloves because if you sort out a pepper with your bare hands, the Scovilles are really carried in the oil that's in the pepper. And when you touch your face or your eyes or you kind of touch your nose or something, you'll all of a sudden start burning and you'll be like, oh, holy fuck, what did I just do? So um, once you've got your pepper squared away here, now, the outside of the pepper is not going to do it to you. It's when you're inside. So I try not to touch much of the inside. And then I'll, I kind of take it and just break it down to kind of flatten it out. And then I cut some strips that I think will be nice to lay in my burritos. So they're maybe a half to three quarters of an inch wide, the length of the uh, serrano pepper. I'll do the same on the opposite side. So I have enough here for like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight burritos. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my, uh, my crusade pan here. So you could do this in a regular pan. It doesn't need to be some special cast iron pan. I've got some uh, high temp uh, smokeless olive oil. I will lay that in here. I'll let it warm up so that the oil becomes uh, more water-like and I'll swirl that around. Then what I'll do is I'll drop some seasoning on the peppers and I'll throw them in there. Just some salt and pepper. And I'm going to let them blister up in the oil while uh, that's going on. We'll do the food prep for everything else. So you'll notice I'm going to pull out a couple of little plates here. Everybody's always like, 
damn it, Greg, I wish I would have known you were doing a live. And I'm like, I can't let everybody know. Because I just can't keep track of it all. So the oil's still very viscous, so I gotta let that pan warm up. Once it's got some heat, we'll be good to go. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make our slaw. So once we've got our Baja slaw made, we've got our, our peppers seared, we're all of a sudden, time freezes. You can prep dinner an hour, you can do dinner anytime you want. Here we go. Uh, I get a metal bowl. I'll show you how this works. Um, I do this reasonably often enough that I usually have some cabbage around. Nice thing about cabbage, it keeps really well everything but the outside leaf and the cut edges. So you'll notice I'm going to take off a cut edge. I'm going to take off the second cut edge. And then I'm going to peel a layer off the outside. And I'm back to some pretty fresh cabbage. Really, it's, it stores really well. I'll deep core that one. So that's enough for a little bit. I'm gonna put this in here. You'll see that I, because I'm on a septic system, I have a tendency to kind of manage my garbage. I'll just set that off to the side. And that might not be enough, so I'm gonna cut another piece of cabbage here real quick. Now, this is a much fresher piece, and I'll make, you know, I'll make uh, something with cabbage again in the next few days. So I'll peel off the out outer layer. Uh, the cut edges on this one will come off as well. And I've got a nice healthy piece of cabbage now. Get the core out of it, you know, the stem. Now this slaw that you're getting ready to make, anything that you don't use, don't throw it away because trust me, I don't care if they're from Michigan, Minnesota, Maine, Massachusetts, or they're from Mexico. That's all the M's I could think of off real quick off the top of my head. I don't care where they're from, they're gonna like this. I don't care if they're from Mexico and they're a foodie, they're gonna like this. It is goddamn tasty. I made it out at the factory. I had some Mexican kids working for me at the factory. And my mom, you know, she, what did you think, boys? And they're like, oh. And one guy's like, it's better than my mom's. And I was like, oh my God, don't ever tell your mom that. And my knife, my knife boss. Okay, let's see how our oil's doing. Our oil's nice and, nice and watery. I'm gonna turn the fan on. So you have to deal with a little bit of noise. I got my salt and pepper here. I think I need to recharge my kosher salt. You know what you don't want to do? You don't actually want to pour sugar in. <laughs> I know it looks different, but... Alright, so we got our kosher salt refilled. some of this on the peppers, salt them up a little bit, I pepper them just a little with some fresh black pepper, believe it or not, gives them really nice blended flavor when they cook, they're going to smoke just a little bit, I'm going to get these kind of blistered up in the oil, I'll put them all outside down so the outside skin is getting cooked. Now, if this was a multi-camera operation and I wasn't a knife guy, just having a little fun, uh, we'd have a camera pointed down on this so you can see it. But you can imagine the strips are there and the outer skin is down. I'll let it cook for a minute, that blisters. While that's going on, I start getting my cabbage cut up. Cut it a little bit so you don't get the long strands into the bowl. My friends are all worried. 
It's like the Supreme Court of Arizona decided to uphold territorial law today in Arizona, and the Democrats just went yippee because nobody wants to solve any problems. They just want to say, we're your advocate. So the goddamn Supreme Court of Arizona upheld this law from the 1800s of over abortion, which is wildly out of step. My understanding is that if they overturn, they just ruled on the constitutionality of it, not on whether it's a, a correct law or not. But basically, if they ruled it unconstitutional, all of the territorial law that has sway in us Western states would all be uprooted and be a problem. So now, hopefully, and I've been telling politicians this for years, if you don't take charge of this abortion thing and come up with a good, uh, come up with a good plan, we're going to get our asses handed to us because abortion is the guns rights of, of women, essentially, right? They feel the same way about it two guys do about uh, gun rights. Okay. So we've got some cut up cabbage in here, looks like so. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, load it up with some cilantro. For those of you who don't have this in your part of the country, I feel badly. But you can find it around any Mexican market or carniceria. If there's a carniceria around, they usually have a, a chiller that's got some of this in it. Um, if you've got a little bit that's tired, just cut it off, don't worry about it. You might have stuff that's been in the refrigerator a few days. And then I have two fresh bundles I bought yesterday. So let's see how these suckers look. Oh, that's a good looking bundle. A little cold water rinse. Knock off the loose stuff every now and then. You get a bug in there and scare them out. But other than that, you just eat the bug. Who gives a shit? I was reading this thing. It says how many bugs a human being eats in its lifetime. They must, some nerd must have done some fucking work on it. Okay, so seems like a lot of cilantro, but it's really not. Mix that in. Now here's what's great. One more. <laughs> because cilantro is so good. For those of you who don't know it, it looks a lot like Italian broadleaf parsley. But it has a beautiful, fresh, aromatic, almost uh, fruit uh, flavor to it and it's used in a lot of Mexican cuisines. Okay. So now we've got all of the goods for our slaw cut up. Do a little rinse here. Next thing, consolidate my junk a little. Come on. I'm gonna save that bag. No, I don't need to save it. All right, so now let's check on our peppers that are blistering over here. And you know they're good when they get soft and floppy, when they've lost their uh, firmness. And uh, if you blacken them, it's totally okay. You wanna break them down. When you break them down, the heat leaves and the flavor stays. And these are going to be great, not just garnish, but they're a great core across the inside of your burrito. That's why I leave them in the long strips, because my burritos end up about six or so inches long. Okay. Peppers are almost done. Now let's take a look at our meats. Oh, wait a minute. Let me, uh, when do I season this? So, green taco sauce. I use this La Victoria green taco sauce. And for a batch this size, I'll use almost a whole bottle or kind of whatever I have. Three quarters of a bottle this size, maybe. Then, uh, I do a little olive oil. I'm gonna say eighth of a cup. And then I'm a little stronger on the red wine vinegar. Almost as if it was a salad. You want to put almost enough on there to kind of coat everything a little bit. Once I've got that, back to my theme here, garlic. Give it a nice dusting so that when I, oh, I just got a new garlic too. 
perfect. And then uh, herbs de Provence. Now herbs de Provence I mix in big batches. I have big, big bags of herbs de Provence that I mix up. My mom does, and then she pawns it off on me. So I'll use the same herbs de Provence. So I've got a little bit of continuity. Herbs de Provence, garlic, salt, and pepper. I have that continuity kind of across the whole dinner. So we want to only add seasoning that kind of complements the food and amplifies the taste of what's there, right? Kosher salt. Now you don't want to use kosher salt for everything, okay? When I'm cooking, um, I use iodized salt. For those of you who don't remember, Alright, so I'm going to show you these peppers, and I'm going to shut this off. So I'm going to take my, my pan, blanch all the stickings off of it, and on my cast, coated cast iron, that's about all it gets. That's turned off, and I'll show you the peppers so you can see them here. They're kind of uh, blistered with a bunch of black spots on them where they were sitting up against the heat. And those are ready to go. So I'll put them over here, kind of in our little production line on the counter. All right, so I did vinegar, oil, herbs de Provence, salt, pepper, garlic. Now to mix this up. If you use a really big spoon, you're going to uh, jam everything around everywhere. So I use a small spoon. You can make this the day before, and it almost like marinates all the ingredients. So it's literally, you wanna kinda make this stuff first, and uh, you don't want it like, oh, I wanna have it fresh right while I'm eating, prepping the meal, not so. This is one of those things that's perfectly acceptable to kind of do in advance and let it cure. And it'll shrink down a little bit, it feels like it gets a little bit wetter, but everything's soaks into it and it has a wonderful uh, fresh texture and flavor. This is really good with nothing else. If you want to do like vegan uh, tacos, you could do uh, corn, uh, little corn uh, street taco tortillas that are gluten free with this in it. You have a really good vegan kind of very, very fresh, super healthy, you know, Mexican flair, Baja flair. This would go over great in a swanky little restaurant in California, Southern California, or here in Arizona. If I ever get out of the knife business and decide to shoot myself in the face with an insurmountable boulder, you can't push over the mountaintop, I'll go in the restaurant business and I'll make these Baja tacos. Now, just to check it, I just do a big mouthful of it. Now, if you're making tacos, I make my carne asada, I make this, I take car, uh, flank steak marinade with carne asada marinade, let it soak overnight, throw that on the grill, and uh, pull this out, and really you don't add anything else. The only difference is, I've got the peppers here separate, so they kind of accentuate themselves a little differently, they stand out. When you're doing little tacos, like lots of street tacos, I have these bent pieces of metal. You can set, you know, you can set up 30, 40 tacos and make it for 10 people. Um, I mix the pepper into this, and I give this some heat. So I'll put in what I just did, one whole habanero, or I'll put, uh, I'm sorry, one whole serrano, or I'll put uh, two jalapenos with the guts taken out of them, minced up really small, just to add some heat to this. Right now, this is pretty chill. I would say it's, um, I would say it's what I would call Minnesota friendly. Okay. So we've got our slaw made. We're just going to set this off to the side now. And it, it, you know, it's supposed to be wet like a coleslaw. Everything should be a little coated, but you don't want like fluid pooled at the bottom. That would be too much. What I'll 
I'll do is when I start to make it, I'm going to grab the camera. You guys have to bear with me doing a little camera shift all in one take. We'll move the camera over here so you can kind of see me make burritos, okay? Next thing is we're going to uh, turn off the uh, crock pot here. Camera's up, crock pot's off. My tower of power back down in the counter. All right, you guys. So let's open this up and see what we've got happening in here. Woo! Oh, so as I push the fork down in onto the roast, it just plunges down into the roast, not like pokes, it just disintegrates out of the way. So you got a couple of choices here. Here's what I recommend doing. Take the roast, just start pulling bits off of it. I recommend you completely shred it apart. And the reason I do this while it's fully in the fluid here is everything stays so moist, so um, juicy. Now this has got potatoes and carrots and all sorts of stuff floating around in here. Oh my God, retarded, this is gonna be so fucking good. And then let's just take a little taste, see how I did. <laughs> you guys, so good, fucking ridiculous. So, um, what I like to do so I don't have a big hot pot that I'm dealing with while I'm doing the food prep, is I kind of relocate the stuff that I want for inside the burrows. I relocate that into a Pyrex square. Give me a second, let me grab that. I'll we'll jump into the next section here. Okay, so I got my little Pyrex square out of here. Now what I'll do, is I'm gonna reach in here and grab meat. It's just ridiculous. Pulling this meat out, and I'm piling it into the Pyrex here, and I'm leaving the vegetables behind. This will make stock for really good beef, vegetable beef soup or vegetable barley soup. Remember, I didn't put a lot into this. I didn't overdo it with a bunch of Worcestershire or seasoning, tried to make it something special. If some of these onions, and remember we put a bunch of pepper in here, right? If some of this stuff works its way in, I'm just gonna hold the carrots off, because I don't want, I mean the uh, potatoes off. I don't necessarily want those mixed in with my uh, burritos tonight. Okay. A big chunk and there's some green chili there, a little bit of carrot. Never heard anybody to have a little carrot in their uh, burrito. Just gonna fish it out. And then once I get this, I'll set my juice back off to the side. Put my lid back on it. Okay. Now I'm going to get the meat, a couple of forks, and I'm just going to shred it out, making sure that when I go to do the prep, I just go for little chunks of shredded meat. Now you guys have all seen this with like guys that do barbecue, they're doing a brisket or they're doing a pork, uh, they're doing some pork and they just, you know, shredded pork sandwich or whatever. It's the same thing as that. What you don't want in a burrito is a big chunk of meat, all one piece come out in your mouth while you're trying to chew this up. The, the trick here to a good burrito is that there's a lovely mix across layers of flavor that all kind of go into your mouth at once. And that's what we're trying to, you know, we're trying to maintain that. You don't want like one mouthful of meat, then the next mouth is all cabbage, and then the next mouthful you get a carrot and an onion. You kind of want it all mixed together. It's a, it's like a, each one of these is the layer of a musical instrument within a song, right? 
So we've got enough here for a bunch of burritos. Okay, so that's the meat. Three and a half pounds. It's a couple pounds of meat here. What I'll do is I'll set that over. That'll be the first thing that I drop on. And then uh, I'm getting ready to uh, turn everybody and switch you over to here. My kids are at the store, so I'm going to do the tiniest bit to kind of square my area away before they get back here. And then we can hang out and chat a little bit while I'm doing that. Hope everybody had a lovely Wednesday. Cabbage put away because I'll make something with it in a couple days, or I'll maybe make, I'll make some soup with it. I'm going to use our crema. You guys back? Yeah. All right, great. Well, the kids are back just in time, so uh, we can kind of. I'll do the rest of the cleanup afterwards. You guys don't need to see that, but I like to have a little bit of clean working area to do what we're going to do next. Alright, bear with me for one minute you guys, and we'll move the camera. I just want to get this off, because as soon as I get everything made, I'm going to move it over to here. Guys, I'm shooting a video right now, so you don't need to do anything, you don't need to disappear. If you want to avoid the camera, just stay on that side. How y'all doing? What'd you get? Jack, you want to come over and say hi to everybody or no? Come on. Roxy, you want to come say hi? No, I don't want to. I'm a pretty girl and I'm going to hide. Uh, this is Jack, you guys. He officially has just broken through my height and, and he's still going up, I think. Oh, well, you're 15. Yeah. A young 15. You just turned 15. Yeah. Driver's license coming pretty soon. Driver's permit. Driver's, your permit's coming pretty soon. Yeah. Yeah. Into basketball. How about girls? You got a decision about girls yet? What do you like with Why girls? Why are you saying this in front of the camera? I don't know. I'm interviewing you a little bit. You want to interview? What, what do you I like? Well, tell me about girls you like. What are the girls you like? I don't know. Blondes, brunettes, sure. tall, short. What do you like? I guess I'm not, pick, I'm not picky at all. You're not picky? Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. So how about, um, do you like a little Kardashian to dunk a dunk, jump in the trunk? Or do you like them lean and mean? What do you, what do you think? I think, no. I want a little, when he's on the bones, I think when they have skinny little arms, it makes him look like a skeleton. Like, mm. So you don't want him so skinny. You want a little, you want a little pedunk. Yeah. What the deal is, he plays basketball. Because he plays basketball, he's everyone influenced. Might age. Everyone might age. Everyone you're not, Literally everyone likes a little pedunk and dunk? Yes. Literally it's everyone. weird. That was not the thing when I was in, and it's still not. I like, you know, sh All right, cool. Well, um, thanks for joining us for a little hello. Yeah. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to finish up making dinner. Roxy, what's going on? You should come and say hi. You don't have to if you don't want to. All right, you guys, I'm going to try and situate this camera so you can see the entire bit of madness. Let's see if I can do this. Let's see here. Yeah. Maybe that's not the way to do it. Maybe, maybe more up with a little po pointed down. Does that work? Everybody can kind of see that. Boop, boop, boop. There we go. All right, so I put out a cutting board here for what I'm going to do next. And everything here is kind of cool enough I can lay hands on it. I've got my tortillas set down here, my freshest ones here, my oldest ones on top. I'll kind of start with those. Let's get this turned up. So get this heating up, get this out of the way, let me get this completely out of the way. Everybody likes talking about uh, the benefits of this stove or that stove. And I've had all kinds of really nice stoves. And my favorite so far has been a Wolf uh, induction top. 
Uh, this is a KitchenAid gas top that I just put in when I did this little partial remodel. And I like it, but gas is a pain in the ass. I really, really liked my uh, induction top. Okay, so if you kind of clean up while you're hauling ass through the kitchen here, it works out nicely. Let me get my tongs out. And almost ready. We're just waiting for the pan to get hot, you guys. <coughs> Once we're hot, get the pan cranking. I'll show you kind of what's next. We want to get your tortilla pretty pliant. Put it on a dry cast iron pan. You can lay your hand on top. When it starts to get too hot, it's time to flip it. You'll see in a little bit, the pan will be smoking hot here, okay? Now, if you warm this thing up without burning it, you can even put a little blister the skin a little bit. To give you a nice crispy uh, kind of tiny little crunchy shell to the outside of your tortilla, your burrito. So I'm, I just, I want it hot and I want it really pliant. And uh, you do this a few times, you kind of get a little knack for not burning yourself. Plus I got knife maker hands. The knife maker hands, uh, anybody been around knife making know it. They get warmed up a little. So, now this seems like it's a lot of prep. I can do this really fast when I'm not talking everybody through and pre-prepping everything. Um, but fundamentally, it's not that much work, and it's usually like a couple of lunches and a dinner or a couple of dinners. It's, uh, it works out really nicely. Let me see here. You know, maybe, uh, maybe it would be better to put it over here. Let's see if this works better. You can see I have a little bit of my wall that's not quite done yet here. Okay, this tortilla is just about ready. Lay the tortilla out. Grab some meat for inside. You want to leave it a little empty on each end. So I'll put some cheese across that. Lay one of my peppers across that. Scoop of our slaw on top of that. From there, a little bit of the creme. You want to use this Mexican cream if you can get your hands on it. It's nice, it pours. Good stuff. So you can hold it up like a saddle, bring the bring it down so you can contain the whole burrito while you're pulling the tortilla back. Then fold the ends in. You may need to fold them twice like that. Fold once, fold twice. Pull your fingers in, roll it up. You get a really nice little kind of like watertight burrow. You do the same thing again, and that's with a you know several day old tortilla. That's not with a fresh tortilla. Fresh tortilla works even better. So we're going to heat one up again. You'll see it start to bubble up here as this pan warms up. You want to get it to where it's almost just too hot to touch. Too hot to touch for me is fucking hot. You know, this pan's really hot. My finger's touching. It doesn't burn my fingertips, so... <laughs> Give you an idea how toughened up your fingers get. All right. Chunk of meat. Yeah, maybe. And there's a little kind of like... You'll get a hang of this after you do it. you get a hang of it like... One piece of pepper. A little bit of cheese. Just some creme. Hey, Roxy, come here.
best by 626. Oh, no, never mind, honey. I don't need you. Good. Thank you. It always looks like it's too much. You kind of hold it up like a hat, fold the front flap over till you enclose everything, and you pull it back and squish it all together, tucking down the sides. So you kind of get what looks like a pierogi, maybe. Roll up the sides once, twice, once, twice, get your fingertips in, pull, and roll through. And tuck it all in as you roll, and slide it out of the way. You're going to see what we're going to do with this next. And if they come up undone a little bit, totally okay. Some of the tortillas are a little bit bigger than the others, some are a little bit smaller. What we'll do is, I'm just going to make three right now, or maybe I'll make five because the kids may have, the kids may double down a little bit. This one will be kind of a small one. So we got onion, beef we cooked all day. It's got a real nice peppery flavor to it. Slice of pepper. Cheese, some little breaks, Baja slaw, cream. Now you could do scoopable sour cream. What I recommend you do is take the sour cream, whip some milk into it so it pours, it's pourable and more liquid. And then it makes a really nice, uh, uh, re really nice kind of Mexican style cream that you can pour into your burrito really nicely. Pull it back. You can see I make like a little baseball hat. Roll in the sides. Roll in the sides. Tuck your fingers in. Tuck these under. Hold it all together. Slide it out of the way. I'll show you what we do next. This is super, you guys will love the next part because it's like really immediate. Now these fresh tortillas, they're really pliant. I probably should have ripped it with these guys. But I don't like, I hate wasting anything in the kitchen, you know? I was raised in the 70s and I feel bad if I like don't eat everything because Sally Struthers was on the TV saying, for 25 cents a day, you can save a kid in Africa. For 25 cents a day, you can save a kid in Africa. That was uh, Sally Struthers. So because of that, I feel guilty about wasting any calories. All right, put our meat in the middle. This one's going to be a little wetter. This, one, this one's going to be for my son. It's going to be a big one. Cheese, a little bit of cheese. I'm just using cheddar here. You can use a Mexican blend. You can use jack cheese. You can use whatever the hell you want. I didn't tell you measurements on everything because it's not really that important, guys. Just whip some stuff together, throw some stuff in, make a little slot. It's not really that critical. It's the coming together of everything. It's not the exact measurements. And the goddamn stuff is just delicious. Now, I told you I made more than I needed. This will go in the fridge, and I'll come out here, and I'll see the kids with a bowl of it eating it like it's salad. Fold it over. Tuck everything in. Form a little baseball hat like this. Roll in the side, roll in the side, pull in with your fingers, tuck everything in, roll it over. Nice burrito. Let's do one more. It's like the weirdest thing. I'm excited about doing a good burrito. Yeah, so I, this wall had some awful tile on it, and the whole kitchen now is done except for the wall that's the background right now. So I'm kind of, I think I'm going to pick up blue out of the tile in the background, do a sky blue there, and hang some paintings up. Get our burrito nice and soft and stretchy and pliant. Woo! Some bitch is hot. Put some beef in the middle of it. You'll like what we do next. more than you think it should be and it just works out because you kind of compress it all, you know? 
Okay, so you got this kind of clop of food in the middle. Hold it up, use the flap, contain it, pull it all back, make your little baseball hat. Squeeze down with your fingers, stretch the burrito to fill it up, roll in the sides. If you got a little errant piece that's messing you up, get it out of the way. And then roll it all up. Okay. So that's five, that's more than we're gonna eat tonight. I'm gonna rinse my hands off. Okay, so next, we've got our hot skillet going here. What I do, you gotta be careful sliding this under here. I set this down. I do like two at a time. What I'm gonna do, it's almost like ironing the, the, the burrito. I'm gonna drop this down so we can all see each other. It's almost like ironing the burrito. We're gonna roll this and it's gonna brown really, really fast. As soon as it's skinned and brown, you can kind of get spatula underneath it like it's a pancake. And then I flip it over. You can roll it a little bit like this. And it just does a nice job melting the cheese on the inside. These are really, really good, you guys. Like, they're just ridiculous. <coughs> are you guys ready for dinner? Get your drinks. Drinks on the table, please. So now, here's the first burrito. Second burrito. They're nice and warm. Go ahead. Now, part of the grilling is to kind of warm everything up inside, get everything kind of reheated, melting the cheese a little bit. The other part of it is, and then if you we're doing this for a bunch of people, you can put out a shaking dish and start setting them up like bricks, and the whole thing will warm up really fast, and you'll find everything's just hot, food's all steaming inside, throw it in the oven, whatever. But when you grill them like this, they don't stick to each other. You can kind of stack them, maybe put some uh, tip foil between them. Because they're grilled, they won't stick. The other thing it does, it kind of holds them together because we're trying to get as much as we can into one tortilla. And if they open a little bit, totally doesn't matter. It works just fine. You can see these older tortillas don't stick as well. The new tortillas stick really nicely. I don't know. You guys like these, right? What do we call them? Burritos. Just burritos. These are Sonoran slow cooked beef chuck burritos. All right, I'm going to turn off the heat, turn off the fan. I think you guys are probably, I'm going to cut one of them in half so you can kind of see what it looks like. close. Yeah, that's just really good. Oh, fuck. So good. <laughs> okay, listen, eat your heart out, bitches. Okay. We're gonna have dinner now. Thanks for joining. I wanted to show you guys part two. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Go over and check us out at medfornife.com. We're always making knives. Having a little bit of fun, talking a little bit of politics, family, friends, great people who work at the factory, and all of you uh, knuckleheads who support us, we really appreciate it. I hope you guys have a great evening with your family. Cook something for them, show them how much you love them. I am out.